Hello, and welcome to Let My People Eat, a podcast that provides satisfying talk about kosher nutrition. Here we clear through the clutter of nutrition speak, arm you with the clarity and confidence to eat, feel, and be your healthiest every day. I am Jill Sharfman, a board-certified holistic nutritionist living in Los Angeles. And I'm Dr. Andrea Moskowitz, a neuroscientist and psychiatrist in Los Angeles. I use my training and experience to integrate positive lifestyle changes into my patients' lives. Hey, Andrea, how are you hey, doing? Good, Jill. How are you? I'm good. So, you know, at the beginning of the new year, somebody challenged me to meditate. Uh-huh. And I signed up for one of these apps. Uh-huh. And I try to start meditating every morning. Right. It didn't go anywhere. Oh. I just was okay. like, I got very frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it made me think about, you know, this whole movement right now. Everybody's talking about mindfulness, meditation. Right. Like, it's it's a thing to do. Right. Um, and then we got this voicemail that I want to play for you. So, okay. so it really, it brought it to the forefront. Okay, here you go. Hi, Jill and Andrea. My name is Beth, and I'm hearing so much about being mindful these days. I've tried to use apps to meditate, but I find that they're actually stressing me out as opposed to calming me down, since this is one more thing I'm adding to my to-do list. Could mindfulness actually reduce my anxiety, or is mindfulness just another buzzword? Thanks. Okay, so she said, is mindfulness just another buzzword? That right. was her question. Um, so today we have an expert in the field of mindfulness. Uh, Svi Kessel has been in the holistic field for over 20 years. His main focus is on mindfulness and why being calm and internally happy is important. He does this through providing different tools that people can use in their daily life to navigate through different situations that arise. And of course, Svi is Zulika's husband. If you remember in episode 29, we spoke oh, to her about right. clean skin care. Um, so welcome, Svi. Thank Hi, you. Svi. It's Thank so you. nice Thanks to have you here. Um, so, you know, I came across this other idea of Yeshuv Hadas, mm-hmm. which means, it means peace of mind, I guess people refer to it, but it also means settling into present moment awareness. Ah. And I think, is that what mindfulness really is? Mindfulness, to what I understand, is living in the present, being present. So, yes. Yes. Okay. And it has a lot of positive benefits when Correct. we live in the present. They, <laughs> right. It reduces stress. Um, it protect, protects against depression, anxiety, um, just very important things. Okay. That and, it want... Im- and it improves our relationships. Yes. Right. Okay. So, but it's different than like maybe what I was trying to do is I was trying to get rid of some anxiety or some of the stress in my life, but it's really more to accept what's going on. I think you said the word, you're trying to do it. When you meditate, we don't do it because we have to be present and calm. So we're trying to force something to do. And I, I've, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to do meditate. You can't move. You can't scratch. You can't do this. If you need to scratch, scratch. If you need to move your arm, move your arm. You've got to get into that state of being present first. So if you're trying so hard not to do something, where's your energy going to go? Focusing on what you don't want. Yes. So the whole idea of mindfulness and meditation is to bring yourself present right now. I mean, is, is mindfulness a new age thing? It's only been around as long as the Torah. Right. <laughs> the Torah actually right. talks about it, and a few passages back it was very heavily talked about being present. You know, where is Hashem? If you're so busy doing everything at once, you're not present, so you can't see what's going on. So it's a very big factor of just being present, mindful, whatever you want to call it, just right now. And to force meditation is another one of those to tick off those to-do lists. Oh, yes, I did that today. But the whole idea is, is to prepare yourself for the day's journey. Right. So how did you, you've been doing this for 20 years, how did you start going down this path? Well, it's, it's a while ago. Um, I started off with meditation and trying to work out. I, I had a thing many years ago that I was suffering heavy from, from asthma. Um, I was under a lot of stress at work. I had my own engineering business back in Australia huh. in design field, and it, it was a long hours. And I was in a lot of physical pain, and I wanted to change my life. Um, I, I tried going down the food path of, of changing what I eat, but you could, I could only go so far. And I was seeing clients, and it could only get them to so far. And then it evolved from there into the mindfulness over time that I realized that, you know, there's more to it. Why not use the strongest muscle in the whole body? The mind. Yeah. So let's yeah. use the mind to change things. And when it's in a calm place, it's like 
as the clouds have gone. You can see what's around you. And when you're trying to force something, all you can see is that thing that you're forcing. That that's that's where it's sort of extending and and growing. I mean, every day I, I think I'm mindful, and then all of a sudden I've got this noise going in the back of my head. It's like I didn't know that was there. It was playing the whole time. So there's another level of of mindfulness of being present that you can keep constantly working on. It's it's a journey. It's not like I in my today list. I put in my calendar ten minutes. I'm going to do this. No, right. it's it's a it's a journey. It's not a destiny. I think that's that's why I look at it as well. So you have an, a holistic approach to this so you're talking about the mind correct right? so that you have to start there correct to calm that make the choice and then the body the so bo- yeah i i don't really separate the mind and body too much mm. you know it's you, your fingers you move your fingers and it's it's been told by the mind it's not like it's a separate so mind and body sometimes i use the words interchangeable it, to me it's all the same thing it's, it's the whole body it's a goof it's everything's together okay so that's when i when i talk about it that way Right, but there are things you could do for the body to help the mind. Correct, yes. Okay, so... Some of them may be exercise. Right. Some of them may be stretching. And exercise doesn't mean you walk and you listen to your phone and you're pre up to doing all your texting. It means being present, exercising, stretching, whatever it may be, to bring yourself and make sure you're breathing. Breathing is a very, very big important part of meditating, mindfulness, even in everyday life. Just right. take the you no know, breathing through the nose, in and out through the nose, slowly at a pace that, you, and you can feel your diaphragm. You know, it's so important. I, I have see clients, and I put my hand on their on the the diaphragm, and it's not moving. And I'm like, you're not breathing. They're like, of course I am. I'm alive. I said, yes, but you're not really <laughs> breathing. You're not being present. So even right. just being aware of of what's happening in our body is bringing us back to present. The more present we can make decisions, irrational decisions. Right. Okay. And. Obviously, we also need sleep. Correct. Good, healthy food. Correct. To support all of this. Support all of it, yes. Yes. And then the last part is the spiritual side. Correct, yes. So I wouldn't put it the last, but it's, 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 it's <laughs> another. Each part's needed. Each part is a very integral part. You know, sleep doesn't mean you lie in bed for a long time. It's getting good quality sleep. You know, you may be able to put it, if you're sleeping, when you're there, you need to be... It's like going to sleep. It's like going to a chasna and then jumping into bed and expect yourself to sleep. You haven't unwound. So like allow an hour before bed to unwind yourself to get yourself in that sleep mode. So then the body's in a calm, ready to go to sleep. Otherwise, you're going to go into bed and after a chasna, go straight in there for two hours and your head's, you're still playing the music and you're still dancing <laughs> and, and you're not even there. So these are the things that we have to be aware of, that, that, that you know we've got to allow time for this. We can't expect our body to all of a sudden just switch on and off. It takes time and being present to know these things and planning it ahead. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it's interesting, like for a lot of for a lot of us, you know, when our kids are little, we hope, like we want to get them to sleep. So we're very good at doing like a routine Correct. and like a whole sort of, you know, a thing for them. And it's like very pleasant and yes. it's calming and it's like a nice time. And we don't treat ourselves as well a lot of times. Oh, we haven't got time for that. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe maybe you don't have time not to. Yeah, exactly. It's like people say I don't have time to meditate. Well, you seem to have plenty of time to get stressed. Right. Why, why you do that? You've got plenty of time for that, but you don't want it. Yeah. But you'll yourself plenty of time. Let's, let's try being productive and bring yourself down. Because there's thing about, you know, working in the zone, being in the zone. People say, but I've had clients call me and it's like, when I push myself really hard, I'm so productive. I said, that's, that's obvious, isn't it? Because you're focused. Mm, right. Let's do it in a way that's helpful to your body in a relaxed, calm state and keep the focus there. The only thing that's keeping you going is that focus. That's really what you're talking about. Right, right. Wow. Um, so in, our, in Judaism, right. we actually have something built in, some form of meditation. Correct. Which is, is davening, is tefillah. And I, I actually came across this and was fascinated. Uh, the Shulchan Aruch Ar- Ar- says this. Okay, this is directly from the Shulchan Aruch. During tefillah, you must focus your heart on the meaning of the words your lips are uttering. You must imagine God's presence right there before you. Dismiss whatever thoughts are bothering you until you are left with a clear mind to focus on your tefillah. If an extraneous thought comes into your mind during this time, stay quiet until the thought disappears. Beautiful. That's, yeah. I mean, That's beautiful. how yeah. amazing is that? that and, and I was reading further even that it used to be that a lot of the the Chachamim would would be uh, shepherds in Jewish history yes. because it would allow them time to go into the field and sit and meditate and contemplate 
all of this. Uh, the Baal Shem Tov also during Tefillah, he, he really, this whole idea of mindfulness, it's not something new. It's right, no. <laughs> it hasn't been invented with the apps. Right. Um, so it, it just I find, found it so interesting because we think well, of meditation as maybe, maybe Buddhism, right? right. Mm-hmm. That, that's the, the Western world have, mm-hmm. have seen that as as a form of meditation, but right. we've got it. As I mean, Jewish, we've got it built in. You know, there's right. two types of tefillah, isn't there? There's a tefillah, Amin Kamarov, and Shacharis. Plus, there's also meditation, abodados, which you have personal time for prayer. Which is which is also very important too. Is that your time out, your time to, to, to spend with yourself? You know, we've got all these amazing gifts and, and beautiful things given to us. Yeah, I mean, I also think we have, if they're used properly, right? The um, the brachas throughout the day for you know after we use the bathroom, when we wash our hands, yeah. when we after before we eat something, it gives us just like a moment to sort of contemplate what we've done, what we're doing, and sort of and just focus ourselves on that. And how thankful we are to Hashem for giving us all of that. Yeah, uh, exactly. And be appreciative, be present. Appreciate. I've got an apple. Say a bracha for an apple. It's something beautiful. Look at it. The, the yeah, apple came nice. off a tree that was so willing to just give. All it was is there to do is just <laughs> give and give and give right. and take it. It doesn't care who takes it. It's willing to give. It's such a beautiful thing. And the apple, it could. You know what's yeah. inside an apple? Do we even understand what's inside an apple? How it was created and these seeds? It's unbelievable. You bring yourself into present. You can see all the glorious things Hashem created. Right. right. You know, I think it's interesting. Too. Oh, um, a number of years ago, so I went through and I was just reading a number of books on mindfulness. <laughs> okay. So I was, um, because it's used a lot actually in psychotherapy. Yes. And it's like a basis for dialectical behavioral therapy and some other things. So I was reading um, Thich Nhat Hanh, who's a Buddhist mm-hmm. um, uh, priest. And he's written a lot about, he writes all only about mindfulness, basically. Oh, wow. So he wrote about like having a day of mindfulness. Yes. So I'm like reading through the day of mindfulness and I'm saying Shabbat. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, no, I, I looked at it and I said, because he's like, you know, turn off the electric electricity. I mean, turn off the electronics. Yeah. Um, don't go in your car. Stay in your home. Like when you eat, like concentrate on this. And I'm like, you know, concentrate on like talking to your loved ones, taking a walk. And I'm like reading this going. Okay, I do this every week, and he's like, "Yeah, and if you can, like this, it's 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 great if you can do it for twenty four hours, and it'll change your life." You know, of course, you know, maybe you can only do it once every few months, and I'm like, "Oh, oh no, I'm doing it every week." Okay, this is good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, look, your food's already set up for you. You don't have to right. focus on that. You don't have to work where parking is. You can just—it's a good lesson to be present. It's, it's amazing how Shem created this—a lesson for us twenty to every week. To learn to be present. We don't, what do you have to get worried about? Oh, I've got to pay the bill. Well, you can't really do it right now. Right. So you can learn, teaches us to focus on being so present. Yeah, right. so important. Um, on Chabad.org, uh, from a Rosenberg Gottlieb wrote that in 1977, the Rebbe, we're talking about the Lubavitcher Rebbe, began a push to make a kosher form of meditation available to the public. The Rebbe specifically mentioned the efficacy of meditation as an antidote to stress and anxiety. Mm-hmm. He was concerned, however, that many of the more popular teachings were not consistent with Torah values, like right. Buddhism. He reached out personally to a number of religious psychologists and medical professionals to, who were well-versed in meditative practices. In his pioneering spirit, the Rebbe urged us to develop acceptable meditation methodologies that would serve as tools for overcoming stress and anxiety, thereby replacing negative emotions with feelings of internal peace. It's, Amazing. That's so beautiful. But <laughs> yeah. it's saying swap out your negative thoughts with positive thoughts. You know, it's, that's a big part of being mindful. It is realized, you know, you might feel stuck, but in there somewhere you're going to find some good. There's a great opportunity to grow. And if you've got the presence right now, you can use those words to swap them and to find the positive out of it. And little by little, you know, it's like when you're trying to meditate at first, you're struggling to get, what are you looking for? You know, you're trying to force yourself to meditate. I should say, I'm trying to, I shouldn't say, you know, we go yeah. present right now. Just enjoy what it is. Okay, the mind's so busy and active. Don't fight it. We don't need any more struggles. We've got enough of them in sight. Be present. Just enjoy what we have. Put a kind word in. Look out the window. Be thankful. And as you become more thankful and find more positive words, the mind's cup slows down and you can be more and more present. So, so what are some real practical tips? Because I'm listening to this as somebody who's 
after, you know, my mind's always going and, and I couldn't meditate through the app. Like what are some practical tips or tools that you might share, you know, in your program or in your toolbox that. Um, one wouldn't be using an app. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one would, would be, you know, if you happen to fit it in a calendar and you're feeling the pressure of it, find another time slot. Maybe it's even five minutes before bed. Don't try and pick an hour. Maybe five minutes before bed. As we said, it's a good time to unwind. So there's a good chance that you can fit it into the schedule without having any other pressure. We've got to try and find things in our life that are going to make us feel good and positive. So if you can find it, what the thing is, is the body's used to being in that revved up state. Mm -hmm. yes. So we've got to slowly switch it. Now, if you start slowly, after, even a good time is after exercise where the body's a little bit unwound. Try and put a little bit of five minutes of meditation. Do you have to sit down? No. Jewish meditation doesn't say you have to be in any place, any location. You can do it wherever you want. So you can do it, even if it's like, you know, I'm going to go for a walk for five minutes. And you can just focus, focus on the beautiful things around us. That can be considered a meditation. Mm -hmm. So you, well, look what Hashem created. Just simple things. Start small. I think the best thing I can teach people is to start small. Look at little things, little wins. Take those little wins, and then things can grow from there. And And that will help with the chatter, like when you're, you know, when you're walking or when you're, you know, and you have all these thoughts coming in. Like I know regular meditation says kind of like push those. We even read maybe in the Shulchan Aruch that you got to push those thoughts away. Is I know you said that I, would I, cause yeah. a problem, right? I, I hear what you said. I read it. I, yeah. heard, it, I heard it differently. Uh -huh, <laughs> okay. So to me, it's like I say it again. We don't want to create any more struggles inside mm -hmm. us. If your mind's going at a million miles an hour. Thank you, Hashem, for giving my mind a million miles an hour. Don't struggle with it. Just let it be. Shift. Shift our thoughts to what we want. It's going to pull you back the other way. Fine. Just keep doing it slowly. Don't fight it. Just whenever you can, just slowly shift. And guess what? The body and mind starts getting used to the new way. It takes time because you've had a lifetime or whatever time it is doing it that way. Right. So we expect to put an app on five minutes later, oh, wow, I feel like a million dollars. Well, you've got a lifetime of programming one way, It's you know, and we have the Yitzhahara. The Yitzhahara is not going to say, oh, let's make this person nice and calm now. He wants to do it. I never heard the Yitzhahara give up that easy. <laughs> He's going to hold in as long as he can, so don't fight him. Swap it. Mm -hmm. And then as we ask Hashem to help us, I would like to be more calm, I would like to be more present, just take little baby steps, baby steps. You know, like babies, when you take baby steps, it's a lot more stable than trying to take a big jump. We're trying to take a big jump. You can fall a lot easier. Yeah, so true. Okay, well, okay. Svi works both one-on-one -on -one with clients in his office, and he also works over the phone all over the world. He's about to launch his six-step program as a home study guide with personal assistance. You can follow Svi on Instagram at Svi Kessel. That's T Z V I. K-E-S-S-E-L-L. -L. He also has a YouTube channel, Tzvi Kessel, and his website is Flowing in Growing. So that's uh, flowing with an N and then growing.com. So, um, you know, go ahead, check that out. Follow me on Instagram at Jill Scherfman. I want to thank our engineer, Mike Cassantini at the Network Studios. And Tzvi, thank you. I feel thank calmer you. already. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for allowing no, me to, to share. No, it's, yeah. a, it's, 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 a, it's a journey. And I think more people realize it's a journey. Right. Right. You know, it's, it's, we, can have to, we always want to fight things. We always want to try and make things happen. Why do we have to make things happen? Why can't we just allow it to happen? Because the more we can be open to it, we can be open to goodness, we can more allow it to come in our life. So we, sometimes we're trying to find things that are out there but we may have the answers inside. And quite often we'll have the answer. We may have heard it. But now we have to lift the blinkers off and let ourselves see what's really there. We have to listen. Listen. Yeah. Not always with our, with our ears or our right, eyes, with, with our, our whole yeah. body. Yeah. 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 yeah, we do know the answers a lot of times. And uh, yeah. And when we're ready, the answers will come. Yeah, great. All right. Thank you yeah, thank so much. You. Thank you. <laughs> and that is it for this episode of Let My People Eat. Please visit our website at LetMyPeopleEat.com and leave us a comment. Get in touch at our email at podcast at LetMyPeopleEat.com or call us at 317-659-0004. Post on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook with the hashtag LetMyPeopleEatPodcast. If you like this show, please make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Tell your friends and family and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. And please remember that although we are certified professionals, this is not a medical advice podcast. 
No content, posts, or comments should be interpreted as professional guidance. Always speak to your own health practitioner about making the right life changes for you. Until next time, I am Jill Sharfman. And I'm Andrea Moskowitz. Thanks for joining us. And go in good health.